Welcome to the starting out of Excel video then and we're going to be looking at the basic layout of Excel to start out with. So what we can see here is this is what you're going to start out with when you originally open up Excel and you go into a new workbook. So you have lots of kind of different stuff but the main parts that you want to understand at the top here are what we call the ribbon and within the ribbon here this is going to give you all different formatting options and different things in terms of these tabs up here so you can obviously amend the page layouts have a look at formulas and it gives you lots of different options and this is just something over time that you're going to have to kind of look at understand and learn where things are and it will come over time don't worry if you haven't got this developer tab here or kind of some of the other ones it's just because i've got a newer version and i work in the beta version of Excel so don't worry if you ain't got them too but you should have the other ones up at the top there. Then underneath that what we have is what we call the formula bar here so as we're in a stuff down here within the worksheet okay this is the formula bar here and this will show you what's within that whether it's a formula or whether it's text and at the side of the formula bar here we have the selected cell so as you can see here as I'm clicking around and I'm working on this Excel worksheet Okay, because we can see that we have sheet one here. We can see that this changes up here. So once we've kind of got that, we have some little quick options up at the top here. So these are what's known as the quick access toolbar. And you can amend this just by clicking on this button here and you can sort and you can add little things in just clicking on more commands there. And it's going to give you the option of adding in some quick commands. So if you find that your particular way of using Excel you end up using one thing more than other like for me i end up sorting data quite a lot then you can just save them up here and then rather than having to click into the specific thing then it just makes it a little bit easier if they're already up there for you also down at the bottom here we have the status bar we have the sheets that you have selected and we have some page options here so we can see you know that we have page layout if we're going to look at page in kind of what it's going to be printing we have the page break view so, you know, if we were to have multiple pages on that, then we can see, you know, what pages we'll be clicking on that. Um, you know, with this page layout one here, we can see if you're going to print this now, you can see that this one is highlighted because it's gone a lighter white, where this one is slightly darker. And by looking at that, it will show you what's going to print on that page. But just going back to the normal view then, and we can use this little zoom bar at the side here. You can either click at the side or you can just drag it along. You also have the option of pressing the control and just zooming in and out with your mouse wheel for this, um, just to zoom in and out at any respective point that you want to do. So when we're starting out in Excel, then what we need to look at is the main part or the main body of the worksheet here. And we can see that this is the area that we're gonna be working on and Excel works on a way of columns. So these are your columns here. So we have our kind of all the alphabet from A, B, C, D, E, F, and so on and so on. And then we have the rows, so down to so one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. And when somebody tells you a cell, they might tell you, oh, something is in B2. So we know by clicking into cell B2, we get that up in the corner here that tells them to B2. But we also get these where it goes slightly kind of darker gray with the little green sides at the bit here. And that just shows you which column and which row you have kind of currently highlighted. And even if you select a multiple kind of selection within that, your selection up here will only ever show your active cell. So if you were to input anything now, even though we have all of that selected, it's only going to show you what is the active cell that you are currently clicked on there. So we can see that that just works at that point there. We can know that we have this sheet one here and we've quickly gone over what we have for columns and what we have for rows here. But we know, let's say we have this sheet one and if we want to change the name of this, we can either double click onto it and then name it what we want to do. So if we were to say main like so, or you have the option of right clicking onto it there and you get some options here that we can do. We can insert another one, we can delete, rename, move or copy and so on and so on. So if we were to just say rename, it does the exact same thing as what we just did in terms of double clicking, but obviously just double clicking into something makes it a lot easier. And when we add a sheet now, uh, we can see that it's added into sheet three. This is because I've just literally deleted a sheet two a moment ago, and but it won't ever let you go back to a sheet. So one thing to bear in mind with Excel is that when you're adding sheets, okay, we can add a sheet there and say we get sheet three now, we're gonna delete it. 
and we're going to add in a sheet four now it will ever let you go back to sheet two or sheet three okay it will automatically move up the sheets so bear that in mind if you're going to delete a sheet and you have information on that because as you're deleting it okay it's not going to let you go back to it and it's not going to give you the option um, of doing any shortcuts or using undo, undo keys here so just one to bear in mind that if you kind of deleting sheets there what we can do then is you have the option of just clicking into these tabs here and you can see that when we're clicking into it um, each one will just move backwards and forwards you know and it will just highlight which particular worksheet you are working on okay so just bear in mind these are referring to worksheets and up here the whole excel thing that you are currently working in is what is called or what is known as a workbook okay so we can see that for me i'm in book one here and this is because i haven't saved it as anything yet it's just you know the original file that i've opened up and we've moved into so we have that as book one there what we can also do is we can right click into this and say we don't want to have this sheet here we can hide that sheet there and we can see that that now becomes hidden okay so that can hide if you have like a setting sheet or something like that and you're working in kind of big ways then it's one good way of hiding the sheets there okay so that we can see that that will come out there so now what we're going to do is we're going to look at how we can just quickly start to input data into this excel sheet here so say we're going to put in name there and uh, we're going to put in jan feb and march oh there we go just spell that right and we can see here that we've started to input what is known as text data so as we input this here we have this general part up here so on the home tab here we have the number part and we can see that this is referring to all this white space here as general okay when we click into this it's also referring to it as general so say we put in some names here so and as i'm inputting names here once i finish the name if you just press enter at that point then we can see it just moves down that row for us and just makes it easier for us and we'll just put in some names there and when you want to move across at this point then what you can do is you can press the tab and we can see that the tab will move across where the enter will move down for us so we're just going to put in some random numbers so we'll say 100 200 and 300 and we'll say 120 130 and 140 um, for numbers and we'll put 200 300 100 and James will put 150, 150, 160. So we've just input some kind of quick numeric data there. And, you know, it's still keeping it as a general there. So we know that this is a general setting up here. And we've just kind of put this into a little table part here. So we have the names uh, so down at the bottom here. And we have the months along the top here. And... On the home tab then so we can see that we have this up here what you have is this font option here and we can see within this font option now that we can select what we want so say we want to go for jan and we can change any of the fonts by clicking onto it and you can see here that i have this little kind of cloud of a download if i were to click into that then it would just let me download it really easily and we don't have to worry too much about it but we get the bold, the italic, and the underlined part there. So we can just make that a little bit bolder and say we want to make our names a little bit bolder there. And that works kind of really easy for us. And one way, even though this is referred to in, in general, okay, in for the names and of the mums, the way that we know this is a little bit different is we can see here that this is referred to, or this is kind of getting registered by Excel as text because this is left aligned where we can see all our uh, numeric values are all right aligned okay so it just kind of differentiates it a little bit more for you there and makes it easy in terms of saying all right cool well, that's getting registered as text data and that's getting registered as numbers depending on how you want to do it then you have the options of format and the cells though. so although we spoke about alignment kind of really briefly there you have these options up here so within the home tab on on alignment we can just quickly select these here and you know if you had kind of quite a bigger row then that would just center it within the center in terms of up and down and we can see here that these ones would just work in terms of left and right 
But for now, we'll just leave everything left aligned just so that we can see whether it is a text or numeric value that we have there. So with that as well, then we're going to look at how we can just quickly break this out so we can start to look at this. So we'll select our name here and we want to make our text values different to our numeric values here. So within our home tab on the ribbon here within font, we can see that we have this box here. And by clicking into this here, we can see that we get the option of putting in some borders and we can see that we have a thick bottom border there. If we click that thick bottom border there, we can see that now we have that line there and that just differentiates there between the months and the names. And we have the option as well of changing this around. So if we select the names there, we can just go back into it and we can have a look at what we're looking for. So we can see that we have the left border there. So we can click on the left and as we've selected January cells there, we can see that we have that border there that's just breaking it out a little bit. And what we can do also is we have this to the side here in terms of colors. So the A here is what will change the font color and the kind of little bucket thing that we have here, we change the background color of a cell. So we can select the cell and we'll just make this a little bit of a light gray here. And then we have the months up at the top here and we can make that say a little bit of a darker gray and we can see just by changing this now it's kind of breaking it out a little bit and just making it a little bit easier to read so we can say just by changing them couple of colors there it just breaks it out makes it really easy to see stuff and you can kind of start to understand a little bit more of how that table is broken out and all we've literally done there is just put in the plain data and added a couple of borders you know made a bit of fonts go a little bit bolder and just add in a couple of quick colors that are already preset for us and you can see already how this is starting to change this and make this look a little bit better then we know for instance this here don't really make much sense so you say mark in january has done 100 you know mark in february has done 200 but it, it doesn't make much sense in terms of what it is so we can just select the date that we have there and within the home tab or on the number part here we can see that we have percentages or we have this option here and as this is kind of sales that we're working on we can click into this here and we're just going to make this into english pounds and we can see here that it's just added in you know the pound symbols there it's give us the decimal place and it's give us you know two zeros to the right of that decimal place there but you know it's meant to be really really cramped in terms of what it is so there's different ways that we can make this look a little bit better we can use these here so we can either decrease the decimal place or increase the decimal place. And just by doing that, then you know kind of automatically, have you got a little bit of white space within your graphs and within your tables, you know, or are you happy to kind of keep it like this? And just for the way that it is today, uh, we'll just keep it like this just because it's kind of as it is there and we don't want to be messing with too much too quickly. Once you've got your data at this point, then you want to start understanding formulas and you want to start pulling the data out of it you want to be able to get to a point that you you know can start to understand stuff a little bit more about this so you know there's different formulas and different things that you can do within this so we can see that we've inserted the min and max there and what we want to know now is the different mins and maxes for these particular months here whenever we start a formula the way that a formula is broken down is it will always start with an equals within excel so everything will always start with that no matter what it is okay and no matter how complicated or whether it's formulas or formulas it's always got to start with that and the way that you could then do is you could start to input your formula but what excel is really good at doing is kind of really good at helping you along because if you were to start out up here and you know you were to start to look for all these so these are books and within these books are all the different formulas that you can look at and you can start to understand these you know over time and you'll understand where they are but when you get to a point where you understand these you just be able to type in the formula that you want and you'll understand how to use it anyway but if it's a new formula that you've not really used before or anything you have two options at this point here so we can use the fx part here where we can see that it's now brought up the insert function or we have the insert function here which is in the formulas tab and we can click into this here and you don't have to kind of really understand anything or anything like that if we just select all at that point and then we want to say right cool we want to understand the minimum so then what it does is it brings up all the options for you so it then tells you what the base 
formula would do. Okay, so it converts a number into text. And then we can go, no, don't want to do that. And then we can say, right, what's the next one? Returns the smallest number in a set of values. Okay, this is what I want to do. So once you've got that, then we can click the OK button. And you can see here that Excel's already done us a little bit of a favor because it's trying to work out what we're going to do for it. Okay, so it's got the formula we're using up here and it has what's called arguments. So every formula will always have an argument. And depending on what the argument is, will depend on what the information is required here. The great thing about this part is that you have the ability here to just have a little bit of a read. So we can see that the argument for number one here is currently R1 to 125 numbers and sales logical values are text numbers for which you want the minimum. So kind of if we select anything from cell C4 to C9, then it's basically asking us to give us the minimum of that. So we know from speaking about it earlier when we were on about the kind of columns and the rows that we have here. So we know that we have C4 and we have that selected down to C9. Okay, because Excel thinks it's been helpful at that point there. It's not being helpful in terms of this give us two extra cells there. So you can either just click into this little part here and then when you select the area that you want to work on, Okay, we can see that I've just added in there. Extra, sorry. Da, da, da. There we go. So we've got C4 to C9 now as our area. Then we can click on the little button there and that'll take us back. And what that does is it's just going to remove any excess data that we don't need and we can click the OK at that point. And, you know, we were looking at it there and the formula already gives us the option of having the 100 on, but it's just kind of reinforced that a little bit more now. So what you could do is you can go through each individual one, selecting January, February, March, or what you have is this little option down here. Okay, so we can see that we have, if you look there, that little like green buttony thing down at the bottom, we can click into that there and we can just drag that along there. And what that's going to do is that is going to take the formula that we had here. So we know that we had a minimum of C4 to C7. And then because we've dragged that over one column, we now have the minimum of D4 to D7. So it's kept the exact same rows for us, okay? But it's just changed the column in which it is because we've just moved that formula one row over, that formula one row over, okay? And that's the way that that's worked. And the way that this can kind of mess people up a little bit and kind of work on things is if you were to say here, right, I want to add in a total and we're going to use another formula again. So we're going to insert a function and we want this to be the, so I've just put in add and we've gone for the sum there. So the sum is probably the most used Excel function that we have there. And we can see that we have arguments again. So we're just going to click OK here and Excel's automatically done this for us. And it might not automatically do it for you, but if it does, great. If it doesn't, don't worry about it too much. Okay, and we can see that we're getting a result of 570 there and we're getting cell C4 to C7. So we can just select that there, okay, and we can just press enter and click OK because we know that's the cell reference that we want. And if you double click into that, once you've kind of input your formula, what Excel does is it gives you this little bit here. So it gives you this box here and it highlights the sum. So it shows you where your formula is coming from. So we know that this is C4 and this is C7, okay? And we have this little colon in the middle here. So it's just added all them up. And we can use this same tool again to just move that over there. And by moving over then we can double click into the cell. Double clicking into the cell is just gonna show us the box for where that respective formula is. And as the formula again, just move one over and one over, Okay, we can see that that worked there. So now what we can do then is we want to know the total of these then, okay? So now we can use that sum function again. So we could press the equals and we know that we can just write the sum function, okay? And you can press the tab there. And what this is gonna do is just, rather than kind of going up in the insert, we know that the first argument here that is shown a little bit dark is number one. Uh, so we can add a range there. So we know now we want to add C8 Okay, up to E8. And that's going to give us that total there. So we know that our total of sales is £2,050 there. What we can do just to check this here is then we can move this and we can just drag this up. 
So now we get that total there of all the different months. But then say you want to work out percentage. So we know how this works now in terms of totals and um, we can just double click into that there. And we know that with this here, okay, it's already got this highlighted. So we know that that is the row and cells that we are currently working on. But we can see here that we've added in two extra cells and they're not formatted the same. We don't have this underlying border here. So what we can do is we can click into the cell we want. We can go to the home button here and we can see that we have this thing here called a format painter and we can click into that. Once we've done that, we can see that we get these little dotted lines and we can just drag it along. And by dragging it along now, what that's going to do is just select them two there and it's just going to make that the same format and as it is before, it's not going to take any of the writing or anything like that across. But what it is going to take is just the format. And so we know that we had the underline, we had the bold and we had the background that particular grey. So it's just a quick, easy way for it to drag it along for you. In terms of percentage, then what we can do now is if we want to work that out, we can know that we want this and we want this divided by this. So we can press enter and we get a fractional percentage here, but don't worry about this too much for now. We can change this and work with this. And what you could think about doing now is potentially working on what you did before. So we could just drag this down, but we can see straight away here, we're getting an error. And this is one of the errors that you might be kind of concerned about or you get frequently. And this is what's called a div error because it's trying to divide by zero. So if we take that back and we click into the cell because we want to understand where the values are coming from. So we know that we want to say equals and we want to go F4 divided by F8. Cool, that one worked. So let's drag it down one and see where that goes. So now what we're getting is this div zero error here. And with this then we can double click into it again and we can see that, oh, this hasn't worked for us. And, and then you need to ask the question, well, why hasn't this worked? So we have the F5 here, but we have the F9. But when we were up here, we had the F8. So the way that this works in terms of formulas is we know that we have one across and then we have kind of the four down after that. So this has just followed the same process of that so it's taken the one across and then it's done four underneath so one two three four and that isn't what we want we need it to stick into that cell there so the way that we can do this then and this is one thing so all of these cells that we've been using are called relative references so as we drag it along it's relative to where it is because it's just moving along that exact formula and that exact pattern as it moves along but what we need now is to fix it or to make it an absolute. So you can do this by pressing the F4 key. So we've entered the F9 there and we can press the F4 key. And what you're going to get is these little dollar signs here. And by getting these dollar signs, then what that does is it affixes that column and it affixes that cell. So we can see here that we've affixed it to column F. But we've also affixed it to uh, sorry row 9, but we know that isn't the case. So we just need to change this quickly here and change that to F8. And we can see that we've got that little red box now that's come around our total. So once we've got that F8, we can press enter there and we can see now that we don't have that div 0 error and we've got 0.19 there. And what we could do now is we have the ability to drag this down and we know it's working because we've got 1 here. So that will add up to 100%. We can select all of our fractional percentages that we have here. Okay, we can go up here. And what we have the ability to do now is just change this into the percent. Okay, so we can change the formatting of that cell um, from C4 down to C8. And we're going to change that into percentages. And we can see that that works there. And you can see who is getting what in terms of percentages at that point. So taking that for example, then we can now know that we want to get the max. Um, so I'll start by doing it right and we'll input the formula. So we always start with the equals. We have the max because we want to know the maximum number now. We don't want Excel to do what it normally doing. It would probably include this total here. So we just need it to include that at that point. The, four, the C4 to the C7, we can press the enter. And what we can do now is we can drag that along like so. And we can see that that's give us the maximum for the C4. And then we have the D4. And then we have the E4. 
Okay, so we know now that that's working and we have all that in play there. We have different ways that we can work on this now. So say you have your information like this and one way that you can start to work on this and we can make this a little bit better if we just make that column a little bit bigger there. So what we can start to think about now is how could we filter this data? So if we click up into the name here and we can click up into the data part here and then going along the bottom here, we have the sort and filter option. So depending on how you'd want to filter this data, um, you can either go from lowest to highest or highest to lowest, or we can just add a filter here. And clicking on this, we can see that we have these little boxes here that have appeared at the side. And what these will do is we can click into these in terms of the name, and then we can see that all the names have appeared here. So we can deselect all, and now we have the ability to just select one, and then we can select that person. So if we just wanted a quick view of that person, and then we can work on that person just specifically, then that is how we could do it. And we can see that the minimums still said the same down here because while that's filtering, we can see here that on the side, the row numbers have just clapped down onto each other. So the min and max formulas are still working on the references that we have um, from the cell C4 down to the C7. Okay, so it doesn't matter if we work on them at all because let's say as we're just filtering them down and kind of moving stuff around, it will just always stay onto that reference there. What we can do quickly now then at this point is we can start to make this into a little bit of a graph and we can start to say, right, well, we've got the names and January, February, March, um, and then obviously the data that we have here. So we could just select the data that we have and clicking onto the insert part here, we have the option of inserting recommended charts and what Excel is going to give you now is all these different charts. So we can see that on this recommended part, you're going to get a kind of little bit of a bar graph. And we have Mark, Gemma, Jack, James, and then we have the months underneath. So we'll just use this as an example here. We can see that we have this now. And what we can start to work on is how we can change the color of this. So Excel will give you some kind of predefined colors and stuff and you also have the ability to change the layouts kind of really quickly um, at the side here if you just wanted to put some data at the top or if you wanted to move stuff around you also have the options of using this little plus item here to kind of work with this so we can change the axes we can add in um, you know different things we can add in trend lines and stuff so we can say yeah cool we want to do that from January upwards you know, so we want to work on all the January trend lines there, um, or we can just kind of quickly take that out. We also have the options of working in charts the exact same way of what we did with the normal data when it's in Excel. So although we have the sales up here, sir, we can also go into the home tab up here and we can change any of the kind of text or anything that we want to do we can make this go a little bit bigger by clicking up onto the A's here and we can also change the color of that text at any point that we want to do again this works exactly the same for the chart background as well so you could say that right I want to fill this I want to make this you know a little bit gray here and I want to make the whole chart itself say you know go to and you can start to see, you know, it works exactly like that and you can just edit everything within that data there. And what's good about this is say we change Jack's March there. Um, so we can see that his March were flagging down a little bit. Say we change this to 400, then that is just going to change your whole graph for us there. But what this did here is this also gives us a little bit of an error. So we can see that we have the hashtags over here and to kind of long and short of it is basically that means it doesn't fit so we can use the e up here and when you go in between the e and f we have this arrow here and if you click on your mouse you can see that you can either make it a little bit bigger or you can make it a little bit smaller one good way of doing it and one way i like to do it like i say i try not to waste too much time with fiddling about with stuff is if you go in between and you get that little all right double arrow thing and just double click then it will auto fit for you, just making that kind of the right size for you and making sure that everything fits so that you don't get that error. What we can start to look at as well is, you know, if you're starting to work on, you know, making graphs and making things stand out a little bit more, uh, what we can start to look at if you're starting to make things stand out is conditional formatting. 
And this is just on the home tab here. And we can see that we've just highlighted our percentages. So over on the styles part here, we can click into this here. Okay, and what you're gonna have is color scales. So you can change these. Normal has the red um, as the lowest and the yellow. Uh, sorry, the red is the lowest and the green is the highest. And again, these are all kind of customizable for however you want to make them. Um, you know, in terms of colors and making them go higher or lower or anything, but it's just one way of making things stand out a little bit more. So say we have our data selected that we have here and we want to go into conditional file matting. Um, then we can say, you know, within this is anything greater than, you know, 350. And what this is going to do now is it's going to look at our data um, and it's going to now say, right, I want to change this into light red fill with a dark red text. And we can see that it's already give us that example here. But if you just click into it, it's got loads of different options. And again, you can just click on the custom part. You know, you can change the fonts, the borders and the fills. Uh, which is probably more of what you want to do in terms of getting it to stand out a little bit more on that kind of selection that you have. So if we know that a person's doing really well, then we can make them green and we can click OK. And by clicking OK, we can see there that that's automatically changed that to 400. So we know that our target was uh, 350. So if we change that down to 340, we can see that all of this will change. It will drop back down our graph and that will drop out there of being, uh, being green. But... Again, we can change this. So if we say 350, then it's not going to change it because it's not over 350. But if we change it to 351, then the conditional format will kick in at that point and it'll make that cell green, making the cell go a little bit darker green there for us. So looking at some more formulas that we could add down to the bottom here, then we have the average formula that we could add in. So again, it works in the exact same way as before. We always need to start the formula with the equals and we can use the average. And we can see this by putting it in a little bit, we have it there. And then it's got our arguments here. So number one and number two. So we're just gonna give it the range of C4 with the call on it in between to C7, press and enter. And then we can drag that along because we know that this is gonna be dynamic in the way that it works. So it's just relative there. So as we move it across one cell, um, it kind of moves across that column. So I move across column, move across column, and it just gives us the information that we need there. We can also use really useful functions. And it, one thing when you're looking at a lot of different data is the count functions. So we can see here that we get a lot of different options. So we have count, count A, count blank. Okay, and so we just put in count there. And as you get better at stuff, then one thing you'll be able to do is you'll know roughly what you're after and you'll be able to say, well, this one's, you know, it gives you that little explanation there. You won't have to go into the points that will give you the arguments. So we can know that we, you know, can click onto these and just by, you know, opening it up, then it's gonna give us the arguments that it wants. So this one needs a range and it needs a criteria. But for us, we just want the count one. So we just click onto the normal count. We're gonna select the amount of cells there. So we know that we have a count of four and we can just drag that along. And again, because it's relative, it's gonna move along. But what this does is if we delete a cell, okay, so we just delete that cell there and move across, then it deletes it out of our graph, but we can also see that the count function here has a drop. Okay, so why has that dropped? So if you've got like large amounts of data and you kind of quickly see, oh, well, actually, you know, this column only has this much data okay, and just making sure that it's kind of as it should be and where it should be. And by using the count function, that makes that really easy and it stands out a lot more for you, which is really good. And say, you know, if somebody asks you the question, is somebody's total over... 600 so we could say is this 600 plus so just because we're getting a little bit more complicated now we'll just use the formula here to insert it and we're going to use the if function here so we can see that it's asking for a logical test now so what it means by a logical test is saying is something true or false so is any value on our expression that can be evaluated to true or false so we can click into that and we want to know is that higher so we have higher we have lower and we have equals so we want to know is that higher than 600 so we can click off of this now and then we can say if it's true 
what do we want it to do? And we can say, um, we can say, just say true. And if it isn't, say false. So we can click OK at that point. And now we have that true or false because it's saying we have the equals there. We have the formula and we have within the brackets, we have C8 above 600. Now we know that C8, when we click into it, is only coming out at 570. So if it's true, it will give us the true. But because it's not, it's give us the alternative option here, which is the false. And we can again use this relatively. So we can drag this along and we can see here that this is just evaluating now. So whereas before it evaluated C8, we now have it evaluating D8 and we now have it evaluating E8. These cells here, especially within the E8 that we have here, it is over 600 because it's 940. So that's why it returns the true value here. And as you're breaking formulas down, if you just use your arrow keys to move through the formula, it's something I do quite a lot, then you can see as it breaks down each part of the argument. So we know that we have the logical test. Then as it moved over there, hopefully you've seen that there move so that it says the value if true, and that's gone a little bit darker. And we also have the value if false at that point there. Hopefully, like I say, this has just helped you out a little bit, helped you understand some of the basics of Excel. If you've got any questions throughout this, obviously don't forget to leave them in the comments below. I will get back to you as quick as we can. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.